welcome back to another episode of the Engine Shed. Today I've got something very, very special. It's my Christmas present. It's a bit late, but um, you know, I've been enjoying it the last couple of days. And anyway, here it is. I guess is from what that may be. It's of course the LNER A4 Plus bitten in the one-to-one -one collection with the dual tender. Um, very, very, very nice looking like I've got to be honest. Um, it's a typical Hornby limited edition of a thousand pieces, but because it's a Hornby limited edition, that doesn't really mean anything. They'll probably re-release something like this in a different colour in a couple of years' time, so... Uh, huge grain of salt with that one. But anyway, this horse is DCC ready. Uh, the box is fantastic. Hornby's always done a really good job with the box presentation. It's part of this new one-to-one -one collection. Um, some locomotives real things have been stored at the old Hornby facility at Margate so they're now using that as an opportunity to release some limited edition locomotives which is really good um, this is a locomotive that I've been trying to get my hands on for a while as everybody knows I've got a modern image layer but it's all preservation era um, so a lot of the stuff that I have there are a few little quirky things um, the sister engine to this that I've got is Commonwealth of Australia very very sentimental to me for obvious reasons but this particular one was just too good to pass up and somebody here fortunately had the foresight to get me something like this for Christmas so um, needless to say they're now my favourite relative but <laughs> um, yeah but look, anyway just to give you an idea of the box as always Hombie's done fantastic absolutely fantastic job with the presentation of their packaging um, Let's just hope that the inside is as nice as the outside. So let's crack it open. So, you know, it's, it's a standard sort of deal. You know, have to forgive me, I don't have a huge amount of camera around here, but... Okay. So it is the return of the... Pull me phone packaging. It's love it or hate it, it's been around for a long time, so my um, guess would be that this is just one of those old Hornby models that's been reissued or repainted or something like that, and they just had a whole heap of these stockpiled somewhere at some point in time. So let's just have a look. That's upside down. I love the smell of opening a new warming box, it's just... Oh. Well, gone are the days of the old tissue paper, which is really pleasing to see. They've got this um, film in here, which is good or bad, I don't really know, but let's, let's pull this thing out and see what we get. So this is the Bee Tender. I think it was made famous by Flying Scotsman back in its early days of preservation, but... Um, to say it's still a nice addition. Nicely detailed, the paint looks lovely. Looks like this is a water tank. Very nice. Classic Hornby. Uh, it has got this ugly large coupling on the end which is love it or hate it I suppose but I, my understanding this is an old tender that they stole from Kestrel or something like that. If somebody knows let me know in the comments. It's it's interesting, they rebuilt an old A4 or an A3 tender from one of the old um, A3s before they were all scrapped back in the day and Alan Pegler was wise enough to pick a few of these up and of course Flying Scotsman ran with a double tender for many many years um, in the 70s, 60s and 70s and um, became quite iconic but Bitten in more recent years has been running with double tenders, more famously it ran with this double tender in um, the Dominion of New Zealand colours, uh, which I think was beautiful, but um, yeah, quite nice. It doesn't have a lot of weight to it, which is good because you don't want to have too much weight. The Hornby locomotives have always suffered from um, pretty well a lack of adhesion at the best of times, but needless to say, it's just one of those deals that you just got to be mindful of it. So that being the case, that's the B tender out of the way. And now the main event. So, 
The big problem with all these old warming boxes has always been getting these things in it. So we're just going to find the hole in the back of the box and it's usually just one finger and there it is. Slowly bright out. Alright, that's the locomotive. And it appears that the locomotive is actually hooked up to the tender which is actually kind of annoying but for a first the details have been added to the locomotive which I have not seen before so the drain cocks have actually been pre-added which I normally don't see so that's interesting that could have been damaged in packaging but kind of annoying that they have had the tender connected I mean it's got a screwed connector which is unusual but um, nevertheless appreciate a very beautiful model so I suppose the next thing to do would be to have a look at the um, internals and see what we're dealing with I don't really want to touch this too much but we're going to put a chip in this and we'll see what we can come up with. Alright, welcome back. So we have an opportunity here to recap on how I go about programming these locomotives. So you can see I've got this uh, locomotive new set up here. Um, just an opportunity for me to recap on how I do this with the ECOS. So we're going to right go onto the spanner here click we're gonna go new loco create manually now we've got the locomotive onto the um, rolling road no problem so we've just got to be mindful of the fact so you can see we've got DCC 128 default address is always three uh, but before we do so if you've got a rolling road this is an opportunity to use it so I have the rolling road and I'm using it so there's bitten down there waiting to be programmed and, um, It's a lovely looking locomotive, isn't it? But anyway, so we've got bitten up there ready to be programmed. So as per usual, don't usually fiddle with any of the DCC related stuff. It's always DCC 128, which is the DCC 128 speed steps. Um, none of this matters because this ESU has this awesome feature where you can go to the advanced tab up here. And it's got this uh, information. So basically what you do, you read the coder profile. We're gonna go start. Um, I had to unfortunately cut the part of the video. It was just proving too difficult to film and pull the tender apart. So without damaging the locomotive, I felt it was best to just leave it alone. So I just chucked a little Hornby eight pin decoder in there. It does the job. Um, plan for me at the moment is progressively to change over to a lot of ESU, a lot of products. Um, get an ESU lock programmer for the channel. So you can see the ESU ECOS is doing its thing. Um, just also be mindful of the fact that it needs to be on programming track as well. Programming the main is great and all, but just have it on programming track so it avoids any interference with locomotives on the main. So that way it just makes sure it's only reading the locomotive that's on the programming track. So this will go through, it's a generic NRM, NMRA compliant decoder, which is great. 35 CVs, that's pretty standard. A lot of these basic budget decoders have them. Um, I've always said that you should probably look to use more capable decoders or at least better quality ones. Uh, the Hornby one was just what I had lying around. So as I said, I'm going to eventually replace that with a lock pilot or something better quality like that or a lens gold, whatever I can get my hands on. Um, we'll just see what happens. So the Hornby A4s are pretty well documented, they're, they're well built. I've got a five pole open frame motor, which is typical of the Hornby steam locomotives of the present day. Um, the detail is obviously well applied, the colour scheme is beautiful, the, the LNER, obviously my favourite uh, railway company of the period, so I don't need to confirm or deny prejudice or bias there and let you know just have better looking locomotives in my opinion let me know what your favorite is obviously there's probably a lot of lms guys that like it and i like the lms stuff as well but anyway we've got a dakota read success so that's great now the next thing you can do is you can go to this little section here and it's probably already gone through and um checked a lot of this stuff out already so that being said we've done that 
First direction, we don't want 28 speed steps, so let's uncheck that. Enable Railcom, yes, potentially. So let's put the number 4464 into the ESU because that's the running number of the locomotive and it can fit. 4464, enter. Okay, and that's going to be the long CV1718 extended reverse, and we've got that option checked. Okay, let's just quickly check some of the other stuff. Acceleration time, CV5 max speed, we want that up to 225, min speed 0. I don't like using acceleration and deceleration just personally because um, ESU doesn't like it either, so I don't like to use it. I don't normally touch any of the CV6, CV66, CV95, any of that stuff. It doesn't really make a difference. Um, that's all of that. We're pretty much good to go. So 4464, I'm going to name this one Bitten. Okay, let's go bang. We should be done. So if we go exit, we've now got bitten up on screen, address 4464. I'm just going to crank it up to... Let's go up to 12 o'clock. Okay. And now bitten's running on the rolling road. So, usual convention with a lot of these model railroads, model trains nowadays is just um, 30 minutes in one direction, 30 minutes in the other direction. Give it a chance to let the internals bed and all the grease inside the locomotives to uh, disperse and lubricate the internal motion. Um, typically speaking, when you buy a new locomotive, especially if it's been sitting in storage for a long time, the first thing I always do is take the shell off and check to make sure there's no buildup of grease or there's no oil or any problems that um, could potentially be a headache later on. Um, I did do that, I just didn't do it on the camera. It was, as I said, it was just far too difficult. These A4s are very detailed, so I didn't want to risk damaging the locomotive um, and potentially you know, have that on film because it would break my heart. But um, anyway, we're going to leave this to run for an hour, an hour in total, half an hour in one direction, half an hour in the other direction, and I'll get some running shots of the fabulous bitten with its spec and tender running around the layout. So stay tuned.